everybody. Thanks for coming to the sewing um, workshop today. It's so easy. Um, we just had a question already, to, so I'm just going to jump in with a fun fact. Um, on your handout, we have a pattern for a, a gem doll t-shirt. This is a t-shirt you guys received in your goodie bag, um, and that was made by three to four different volunteers. So um, basically, I drafted this pattern from a previous uh, t-shirt, doll t-shirt that existed. She gonna... fixed the sizing on mine to be more feminine. The original one that I did that was just a little off, so she she gave it its style. I just happened. wanted a little shorter sleeve. The last year was like more of like a, like a three-quarter sleeve, and this is more of like a t-shirt. So it, they both look cute, and no, we that's were able good. to modify this pattern, and that's some, one of the things we're going to talk about in this. Originally, though, it was just, that has to be the most basic pattern that we've done. So, that was one of the first ones I drafted up with, um... It's great. Well, it's an, a simple pattern. Do you want me to just talk about the t-shirts while we... Yeah, and I can add a little... Yeah. So, basically, things. a t-shirt, when you can make a t-shirt, um, you can modify it into a number of different ways for a gem doll. This t-shirt is made so it will pull over their heads, and we know they kind of have large heads. So, basically, that's a concern. You always want to make sure there's either room for it to go over her head, or you're splitting the back so that there's kind of like an opening so that you could either add a snap or you don't see what's going on in the back. When I make doll sweaters, I do the same thing. I split the whole back down the back with four snaps um, so that she can have like a nice tight collar around her neck. Um, so depending on the look, you can modify this t-shirt into a number of different ways. And we're gonna talk more about the sewing end of it, but just thinking about a basic t-shirt shape you can add, you can lengthen the sleeves just by kind of drawing some straight lines out um, from this pattern, and you'll have a long sleeved tee. You can also lengthen the bottom and kind of make it into like a little wider, like an A line, and then you're going to have a dress. So you could even actually remove this thing and make a tank top style. So with one shape that we have here, um, you can sort of trace it and create other patterns, and. Um, you know, you can do too, is um, I make them, because your patterns take a beating, you know? They do. So what I do is I make them on like, I'll get the card stock on sale, you know? Just like the beater stuff, or even on the back of like your recyclables. That's what I do. I, I'll use my copier and print, like say this with the, with the, um, the thin paper. I'll print that out onto the card stock and then cut it out. And then that's kind of my master. I actually have, only you guys would, would relate to this. I have a, um, a file in my file cabinet that says doll patterns as I elaborate. And then what I do is when I make the master, what I do is on the copy, that's where I start doing my, and I can't draw for anything, mm -hmm. but I'll take the pencil and like, you know, say take the sleeves off or flare it or whatever the case is or change the neckline. And then, um, so it's kind of like editing, and then you cut it out that way. And one thing I do too is I always fold it over and kind of like clean it up because mm -hmm. both sides can be so uneven if, when you do it by hand. But then once you cut it out, you have, and even use like the, the colored cardstock because a lot of times that's what's on sale. Yeah. And it gives you these stronger, like, patterns that you could just keep. Like, I have one basic dress pattern that I keep recycling and just changing the shape of. So, and where I can't draw and I can kind of use a pencil to do it, that's easy. So, I kind of photocopy. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've done it too with, like, taking old beaten gem clothes apart and photocopying them inside out because... Totally. You have to think inside out and backwards, right? Exactly. Isn't it so truth? remember, like, if you are doing your laundry and your clothes are inside out and all those <coughs> seams are sticking out, and if you were to lay that out on a table, it's going to be a quarter of an inch all the way around your body, larger than it is when you turn it outside. So remember when you're doing patterns, and what I should just back up for a second. Why use patterns? Why use patterns? Why can't we just cut a T shape out of the fabric? When you have a gem doll pattern that you like, you're gonna wanna use it again and again, which is what Sean's talking about. Saving 
those patterns in a folder and you're gonna have it forever and you're gonna be able to know this t-shirt I made fits this doll in a certain way. I can make it tighter, I can make it looser, I can modify this for various purposes. But once you have one you like, you're gonna to wanna to use it a million times, which is why I gave you guys my tights pattern. Oh, here's a handout. Well, also it's like, why to not use just a tube? Why, why not make everything a tube? Because Gemma's curves. She so does. this is obviously the top open from fashion. So the thing is, is you want to count for those curves, not as steeply on the doll, but so then you get that tailored fit because I even think the Purdue stuff was kind of baggy in places that, you know what I mean? It's like the idea of doing custom is to kind of like. Right. You want to get that look that you're looking for. Also remember the toy line is made for kids to be able to put it on and off. So sometimes they were looser so kids don't have a very horrible time putting it on. But when we buy a custom fashion from somebody um, who's made it, we take forever to get the tights on because we made them fit it more to the leg. Um, so and they're new, so they're, they're stiff as can be. They're not pleated. So. But you see how like the the basic curves are in there. Another choice Sean made that on this fabric is that it's a stretchy fabric, and I am a person who yes. loves stretchy fabric. Anything with a little bit of lycra spandex, a cotton knit opposed to a stiff cotton like um even uh, some only stretch two ways so you just want to obviously turn it whichever way you need more forgiveness when you're buying your fabric feel how it stretches and think about what you're trying to make when i'm making a tube dress i want it to be able to stretch this way so you should just pull it up on the doll and she's fitted and she looks great um so stretch is really important and sometimes it's like I just, These novelty prints. I thought I'd put the raw so examples great. out. Of, Very nice. Like what we were using for we the fashion. Can we pass around for them to feel how this yeah. stretches? Let's pass this around. Um, so Sean chose a fabric that's stretching in two directions. You have and to be like you have to be like a fabric groper and feeler in the store. Like this and take and like this. A long I'm time. Do the um, flight attendant. Tug your fabric. <laughs> <laughs> and like this. See how that feels. Because um, it makes a difference if you're trying to fit something and suddenly you're pulling it up the doll and you're like, why is it stopping at her hips? That's because the give is not going this way. So be aware of which way your materials are stretching and think about that in terms of when you're tracing your pattern. It's always about getting it over Jem's hips. If you can't get it past her hips, you're in big trouble. Because um, So you always have to think of making it larger, but... I mean, there's so many ways you can go. Right. You can go elastic, you can go Velcro, you can, I mean, all kinds of things that. Exactly. So we have, um, we're just talking about when we have a, a piece of an existing Hasbro fashion. I'm talking about sewing for Hasbro. This also goes for Integrity, too. If you were going to make something for an Integrity doll, you might want to take an existing Integrity garment and sort of turn it inside out and start drafting a pattern. And that's how I start. With anything I'm doing, I find something similar that fits gem, I turn it inside out and I start laying it down on my fabric once I've established sort of how my fabric is gonna stretch. Um, and I add about a half an inch on all sides, which is way too much, way too much. But I am always more comfortable giving myself more to work with and then cutting it down to be more stable. Yeah when I'm creating a new pattern. Because I'll always have much more on the inside because you're going to use more than you think and then you have the curse of everything's getting tighter as you're going along and then, you know what I mean, it doesn't fit because you've sewn it so small. So after I've like trimmed it, I trim it neatly, it takes a little more work, but then you're giving yourself like that extra, because a quarter of an inch isn't much. So give yourself that extra raggedy bit to like play with because you're gonna find yourself cutting the seams down. Exactly. And always trim right before you're gonna dress your doll because there's all this excess that happens on the inside and no one needs to see it because you're gonna trim it down. Um, who here has a sewing machine? Okay. And has has used it? No. Okay, so some people are gonna need a sewing basics kind yeah. of idea.